Hello, this is Al Withers with the Minnesota Agriculture in the Classroom program uh, based at the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Today we're going to learn a little bit about robots. Uh, we're always trying to help students, teachers, and the general public learn about what goes on on the farm. And uh, in this case, we want you to learn a little bit more about changes in dairy farming today. And so we are going to talk about robots on the farm. We're with Joe Johnson at the Johnson Dairy Farm near South Haven, Minnesota. So Joe, tell us a little bit about how you got into farming and, and your first dairy operation. Okay. Yeah, I grew up on a dairy farm in Becker, Minnesota. We milked 50 cows in a tie stall barn. And, uh, you know, growing up, you know, you ran the cows in and out of the barn each day and fed them in the feed bunk and, you know, milked them, you know, right in their stall. Okay, tell them what a tie stall barn is. Each cow has their individual stall, and they they get fed separately, according, you know, according to what they milk, so you can, you know, more efficiently feed the cows, and they, you know, better chance of them producing, you know, more in a tie stall. They get you you carry the milker along from cow to cow and okay. and milk them in a, from a pipeline. Okay, so then your next transition was to what? In I bought into the herd in 1998 after I graduated. I bought into the herd with my dad and uh, we ended up starting running cows in and out of the barn. We were milking 70, little over 70 cows. We'd run 20 in morning and night. And, uh, and after a few years, the development started coming out and we decided we either had to get bigger or get out. And we ended up, we're looking at some existing dairies to buy and we ended up finding this farm out here in South Haven in 2000. So we bought this farm, it had a double four, fast flow parlor, and uh, a freestall barn where you can milk up to 220. Okay, so explain the double four concept for the, for the viewer. Double four, is, it's got four stalls on each side of the, each side of the parlor. And you, uh, the fast flow is when one cow gets done, the, you know, that, that cow leaves and another cow comes in. Most parlors, you gotta wait for all the cows on each side to get done before you let another batch in. Right, so you still had to have manual labor and you had milkers there with the parlor. Yep, and with the double four parlor with 200 and some cows, labor was an issue. So we were, I mean, it would take four and a half, five hours morning and night to milk times two people. Okay, and so then that went on till when? In 2009, we were looking into building a different parlor or Stern's vet, you know, called my dad and, you know, mentioned about the robots that, it, you know, our farm would be a, ideal you know farm for them you know with, with our setup so we looked into that and that in a parlor and figured the robots would be the best you know best move for the future now i understand there's only about 20 farms in minnesota that currently use robots and so was that were you scared about that making that decision and that investment yeah at the, at the time i was i was quite nervous about you know things going wrong but there was a few farms out there before us so the main reasons you went to using robots, and, and there are four of them behind us, and we'll, we'll get a close up in a minute here, but the main reasons you went to using robots. The main reason was labor issues, you know, you know, paying out too much labor. Our old parlor was getting wore out and beat up to where we either had, we had to do something. And then just the, this, you know, just to get rid of a lot of the stress with having to deal, you know, deal with you know, people not showing up and, you know, the extra stress on the cows from being ran up and down, you know, you know, twice a day. And right now the cows go in at, at will. So they're, right. there's less stress on the cows. So you, you paid uh, how much per robot? You put a little money into this operation. Yep. The robots at the time we bought them were 175,000 a piece. Okay. So that's $700,000 straight up for four robots. Yep. And then the, and then the, the robot building we added on and then we added a, you know, we moved our milk tank. So we got a, a, a milk room over here we got with an office and everything. So it was, and then we put in automatic scrapers in the barn. So the whole the whole deal was close to a million dollars for, for everything okay. to get done. So the day in the life of a cow with the robots, give me the day in the life of a cow right now on your operation. Pretty much, pretty much the cows you know, they got a, I, I think it's, you know, a lot more or less stressful life they're living. I mean, they pretty much, you know, can eat whenever they want. They go on and get milked whenever they want. 
and then they can lay down whenever they want. They, they're not bothered at all. The only time I bother them is once a day I get them up and whenever they, when they get fed each day I get them up and scrape and lime and sweep the mats. But that's the only time they're bothered the whole day. We do all the breeding, all the shots, everything's right out here in the barn. The cows seem a lot calmer. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're used to people more. I mean, you, you could walk out in the pen and you'll have 15 cows up to you. And I mean, you could pet, a lot of them are, you know, pettable. And I mean, there's still a few nervous ones, but overall the cows seem to be a lot, a lot calmer. It seems like there's less injuries to the cows because they're not, you know, as, you know, they're not as nervous, you know, because they're used to, used to people more. Right. Okay, so what prompts the cow then to say, I need to be milked, or, you know, this is my fourth time in here today. Yeah. What prompts them to just do this on their own? The cows in the robot, they get fed a, a protein pellet, and that protein pellet makes them want to come back. It, when, they're, when they're low on protein, they come, that's when they want to come back, or else the pressure of the, ba you know, the milk in the bag. Right. There's you know different things, but it's mainly that protein pellet. They 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 go crazy for that. So. And how many times do they milk themselves? The cows get milked in between two and six times a day. So are you getting more milk per cow now? Yeah, when we started the robots, we were around 75 pounds a cow. And that seven yeah around that 75. Right now we're in the mid 80s, so we've got yeah. about a 10 pound increase. Did it take long to train them? I mean, what was the training regimen for them to learn where to go and how to deal with the robots? It, the training actually went a lot better than expected. I mean, Stern's vet was making it sound to be like it was going to be a month, a miserable month. But overall, I mean, they were impressed. They, they, to this day, they tell everybody our farm adapted better than any farm they put the robots in. Right now, there's 215 cows in the barn. And right now I only have two cows that have never gone in on their own. So they just sort of wait in line. It's kind of like in the city on the freeway waiting for the green light to go on an on-ramp. They sort of just wait in line for their turn. Oh yeah, There's, it's 24 seven milking. And usually about 15 to 20 of the hours there's cows waiting in line during the day. And, and each robot again will take about 60 cows a day. So you have four robots for your 220. So any farm that would have modern robots would be about 60, 65 cows. Yep. Yeah, they say 60 cows per robot, but in our case, we're, we're you know, trying to push 90 pounds a cow, so they, then they say about 55 cows per robot. I've noticed the robots do the best right around that, you know, 53 to 55 cows per robot. When the barn's right around that 210 to 215, that seems like we're getting around three milkings a day and the cows are doing their best. Well, Joe, let's go uh, watch the robot and the cows and learn a little bit more about uh, the actual uh, machine itself. Okay. Right now, it's, it's got a, a disinfectant where it's cleaning the teats off right now. So it's got a brush that swings out, and it's cleaning each quarter off, getting all the debris and, and, dis, and disinfecting the quarters. So it does, it does this twice. It does a double wash on each of the quarters. And right now, as it gets done with each quarter for the second time, it'll, it'll blow air up on the teat to dry the teat too. So it, it does a double clean on each one, and then it dries each teat in the process also. See that, that sound of that's the air blowing the, on the teats right now. So once it's done with the fourth teat, the, arm, the brush is going to swing back out, and then the lasers are going to come into effect and start finding the, the teats of the cow. And what happens is that it stores the last 30 milkings from each cow. So every time it milks each cow, it gets better and better at finding, at finding the teats. So when a cow first calves, it takes, a, it takes a while. It'll store the first 30, and then once it gets to the 30th, 31st, it'll drop the first and keep storing the last 30 as the cow's bag changes over time. So right now, it just connected all four quarters. It's waiting for milk flow, and once it gets that milk flow in each quarter, it sprays the, the brush off. So right now, that cow has milk flow in each quarter. If, if it didn't get milk flow, after like 15 seconds, it'll pull, that, pull the quarter off that it doesn't have milk flow and reconnect until it gets milk flow, because it could have went on sideways or it could have missed the quarter by a fraction of an inch. So right now, th this cow, 
has flow in all four quarters, so she's in here eating her protein pellet as she's getting milk, so that keeps her calm. And, and right now it individually milks each quarter, so once one quarter's done, it'll take off that quarter. Unlike the old, old, old way of milking all four the same, same amount of time, it, it, ain't, it doesn't dry milk the quarters, so that's supposed to help with the cell count and less chance of getting mastitis. So. The individual milk, milking of each quarter is a big, big thing too. This milk right now goes into the receiver jar off to the right here. The jar gets dumped in through the pipeline into the milk tank, into the, right across the, the freestyle barn over here. So right now one quarter got done, now the second quarter got done, so both front quarters are done and the back two are, are getting close. The cow that's in the robot right now is number 695. That's her responder number. That's the, the number on her strap. That identifies the cow when she comes in. Right here, it actually shows the weight of the cow. This cow weighs 1,508 pounds. Then up on top here, it shows 24.46 pounds. That's how many pounds she's given so far. And then right here, it shows a left front, right front, left rear, and right rear. Right rear. And right now the only quarter being milked is a left rear because there's a check mark by the left front, right front, and right rear. And there's an hourglass right here that's all white. So that means that that quarter is almost done also. And then it also shows the minutes and seconds it was on each quarter. So a minute 49 on the left front, two minutes and three seconds on the right front. So far the left rear is milked three minutes and 14, and the right rear is two minutes and 41 seconds. See now the left rear just got done. So right now it's spraying a, spraying a teat dip, an iodine on the quarters. And now it's gonna let this cow out, drain the milk jar. It'll drain the milk jar, do a, do a cup wash. And now this cow will leave and the next cow in line will be entering. Well, you know the old saying, you learn something new every day. And today you learned about the dairy farmer's new best friend, the robot milking machine. I want to thank Joe Johnson uh, and the Johnson Dairy Farm for giving us this tour. Joe, any parting comments? No, I just think that the robots have made life easier for the cows and the dairy farmer, and the future looks good, you know, for, for dairy farmers if, if they want to take this step. Thank you very much. Al Withers uh, with Minnesota Agriculture in the Classroom.